these things here relays how do they actually work and how do they work in relation to an electrical schematic it gets really really confusing i'm going to break it down show you how they work different styles of schematics so when you're on site you can understand the system that you're working on through simply reading the schematics it makes life a hell of a lot easier removes a load of stress speeds up fault finding and all of that good stuff so yeah let's dive into it okay so the first thing that i want to do is just show you two different types of schematics by two different types of designers using two different types of software just to give you some understanding of the differences, what they look like before we get into going through all of this. So the first design is a design by me for a BMS system. And this hasn't been designed using any automation software. This is just standard 2D CAD software by AutoCAD. I use a software called CAD because it's more affordable. It's exactly the same features it's the same as autocad basically just much more affordable so that's what i use so let's have a look at a relay within this design first and then we move on to another one which i'll get into in a second so you'll always see on any type of schematic you'll always see that there's two parts of a relay you've got the first part here which is the coil part of the relay and you can see that this is labeled r1 slash two so relay one, and I'll get into what the slash two means a bit later. And what you'll also always see, sorry, is on the coil side of a relay, is you will always have, if you can see that, A1 and A2. The A1 side is always the side that's connected to the positive. So this is always the positive terminal, and A2 is always the negative terminal. And you can see here, this image that I've got is exactly that relay that we're looking at within the schematics. So you can see that we've got A2 here, and we've got A1 here. This is the coil side. This is what actually operates the relay and changes the contacts over on this side which we get to in a second and you can see the cable feeding a1 is one zero one and then the zero volts the ground that's going from a2 is zero so just so you got a visual representation of what that actual relay that we're looking at in the schematic translates into in the real world hey just a quick one if you're looking to develop your career in controls automation and bms or grow your business make it more profitable in this industry or bring everything in-house so you're not having to sub out these designs and builds we help people do that um, there's a link in the description where you can go and book a call and we can see if we can help you. So I encourage you to do that if that's what you want to do. Let's get back to the video. So to operate that relay, whether it's engaged, energized or not energized, we need a connection to zero volts ground on the A2. And you can see here, this is coming off the, the transformer and then feeding the rest of the drawing. So that's the first connection that we've got. And let's draw this in another color. And then without explaining all the controls, but we've got, as you can see up here, I'll zoom in. We got our 24 volts here. Again, without explaining the controls, but ultimately what happens is it goes through here, through here, something changes out in the field and then sends it back via terminal block two and then connects to A1 in the panel. On the coil side of the relay in the panel, like I just showed you in that image. So that's the first part of a relay, the coil side, and it's the same for contactors as well, which are basically, if you like, chunkier three-phase relays that are capable of switching higher loads. It's the same thing, you'll have a coil side to the contactor, like you do here with the relay, it's drawn in the same way, that rectangular shape with a A1 and an A2. It's the same for contactors. Now, let's have a look at the other side of this relay, which is the contact side. So let's go back to that image. We've, we've just covered the coil side, and that's what energizes the relay and makes the contact side, depending on how it's wired, either go from normally closed to normally open or normally open to normally closed. 
operating it like a switch. So when people say a relay is like a switch, although it doesn't, people saying that it's not a good enough explanation in my opinion, but this is where that comes from, is it's operating the contact side like a switch where we can do various different controls. So on this relay, you can see on one, these are two pole relays, by the way. So we got the first pole, 14, 11, and 21, I think. And this is standard labeling. And then we've got, that's for pole one. And then pole two, we've got 24, 21, and another one, can't remember. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like on the other side in terms of real world hardware. Let's go back to the drawing now. And you can see, and actually the, we, before we do that, let's just address what that slash two means. Should be pretty obvious now. That indicates that it's a two pole relay or the two of the poles of this relay are being used. In this in this design, it's, it's indicating that it's a, it's a two pole relay. So R1, relay one, slash two poles, okay? So now let's have a look at the poles, which is the contact side of the relay. So this is the first pole over here, and you can see that this is on the same page. So R1, slash one, same it's the same label or well, the r1 side is at least but this is now telling us that this is pole one of that relay let's just go back to the images or the image and you can see here 100 cable 100 that's feeding that's the common so the 11 is is the common and then we're going out on 14 the wiring out on 14 cable 200 and then you can't really see it back here but then on i can't remember the number but on the normally closed side we've got 151 so on pole one we're using all the contacts the common normally open and the normally closed let's go back to the schematic so in its normal state without the relay on the coil side being energized then things just stay in this normal state you know, that contact stays on there. And again, we're just focusing on pole one, as mentioned. That contact stays like that, which enables the, the voltage up here supplying the common side of that relay to, to flow down here and bring on this light. Okay. That's when the coil side isn't energized. Now, if it is energized, let's change the color. So that is energized. Then what happens? Again, with pole one, what would happen is that this contact here changes state and will go over in this position, meaning that it will no longer be over here. So let's rub that out, which means that that same 24 volts up here, rather than flowing down this way, now gets switched, switched to go down this, this route, okay? So what we've done there is we've covered the coil side of a relay and then the contact side of the relay, focusing on pole one, because this is R1 slash one, but we've also got a second pole to look at, because this is slash two, where the same thing is happening in terms of operation on the second pole. So let's just go back to the images. So over here on the second pole, we've got eight to one, and I can't see what cable that is behind it, but we've got 821. So the same operation is happening when we energize the coil on the second pole. So let's find that second pole now on this drawing and see what's going on. And just so you're aware, on this design, I've kept things really stupid simple. I don't want to complicate things. I don't want to add loads of information. This is a training schematic more than anything. So I'm not putting loads of different references on the page. You could argue that I could have made it easier by making a note around this relay here where where the pole where pole one is. And I often do that. I often forget which screen is being shared in our community, in our coaching program. So forgive me for that. <laughs> Let me go back and see if I can remember. A few moments later. Yeah so what I was saying is I could put the details here where pole one is and where pole two is in relation to the drawing of how you can then go and find that like more information as to what page to find those poles on and like what 
grid reference they're at but i've specifically not done that on this schematic because it's it's being used for training purposes and i didn't want to over complicate things but i can tell you where the other pole is the second pole is of this relay so let's go and find it and yeah it's over on this page here feeding the plc control module and you can see right here r1 slash 2 the second pole and you can see it's labeled here 821 so there we go 821 so you can see that that's the second pole so it's the same operation when that contact energizes sorry when that coil energizes the same operation is happening on both poles at the same time but they're galvanically isolated because and we want that because this module here puts out 3.3 volts and again I'm doing the same thing puts out 3.3 volts and the other side puts out or what is it 24 volts AC so mixed voltages but this way the PLC knows when there's a safety circuit failure or when there's not because what happens is that contact will open or close and it will then feed a signal into the PLC or it won't as we can see here. So we're getting that signal, not only in light form on front of the panel, but also into the PLC as well. Now let's have a look at a different schematic designed by a different designer and actually using a software like SolidWorks Electrical E-Plan, where it does all this referencing and labeling, which I'll show you automatically, which is really, really nice. And this is actually from one of our coaching clients, Dan, where we went deeper into understanding a specific controls project that he was working on. So you can see that, yeah, there's some annotations already, which I forgot to, which I forgot to rub off. But let me show you what I mean in terms of relays and navigation, how they work on this type of electrical schematic. Yeah, so here we go. Here's a good example. Let's just rub this out. That's what we were doing. Okay, so what we got, again, you can see it's drawn in the same way. It's got our A2, it's got our A1. This is the coil side of a relay. And you can see that there's a bit more information on this one. It's labeled 65K3. And it's telling us here that it's 24 volt DC coil voltage. That's something to be aware of. Coil voltages change. You know, it might be 24 volt AC. It might be 240 volt or 230 volt AC. You know, it could be any type of voltage. That's something to be aware of. Now, this is coming from a machine out in the field. And you can, what this is indicating is that it's sending 24 volts out of the machine DC into the coil of this relay on the A1. And then you can see that the, the zero volts is connected here on the A2. So when that machine sends out that signal, it will energize that relay and switch it on or switch it off, depending on what's happening on the contact side. Now, this is what I mean by more detail, more information on the contact side. So you can see that it's a single pole or single pole and they're always labeled the same way. So 11 is the common, and then you've got normally closed is labeled 12, and normally open is labeled 14. Now to find the contact side, the poles, or this first pole of this relay, you can see here it says slash 132.3. So let's go and find that. So that's telling me that it's on page 132, and it's on column dot three, if I understand that correctly. So let's go and find that. Yep, yeah, so here we are. Let's just rub this out. That's where we were last time. So here we go. We're on page, just so it's clear, we're on page 132 over there, and we're on column three, at the top of the drawing, column three. And look, you can see right here, We've got the contact side of the relay labeled the same way or the same number, 65K3. And then over here, we've got the page reference and column reference back from where we came from. So you can see here that you've got 24 volt feed coming along here. And let's remove that because it's confusing. And then you've got it feeding into the common or sorry, the normally open. 
And then when that coil side of the relay energizes, that then switches this over there, which allows that 24 volt DC to blow through the relay and then down here into yeah a plc module digital inputs so you can see that's just a different way of how you reference relays within two different styles of electrical schematics and if you're like greg or you're like dan and you want support and help progressing your career or business into controls automation bms link in description we can help you with that